What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 362 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast. For real, Sam Smith and Mark Allred, joined by special guests Ben Kennedy and Amon McLean, discuss the expectations for Bruins defenseman Hampus Lindholm. <laughs> Next, moving uh, on, so we can stop getting annoyed over Swayman, over over the haters about Swayman. Let's talk about uh, a guy that um, has had a little bit of issues recently. That is Hampus Lindholm. Now, last season didn't have the most amazing year on paper. Uh, his plus minus plummeted. It was a plus 49 two years ago. It was down to a plus 13, if I'm not mistaken, last year. Um, he has six years left on his deal. He signed an eight-year deal at six and a half per season when he was acquired from Anaheim a couple of years ago. Um, you know, he had his best year to date in that 65 win season two years ago uh, with Jay Leach behind the bench. I'll start with you, Amon. Uh, when with Jay Leach behind the bench as a defensive mind back there, do you think Lindholm's numbers all over the board and his defensive play will improve? Uh, yeah. Um, I think a big part of it's also going to be the Zadorov signing. Um, like they, it means that Zadorov and Laura, I can kind of, they can just deploy guys in ways that they couldn't last year. So, I mean, it'll allow Lindholm hope, like, in a way, it could allow him to get more offensive zone starts. I mean, if you're starting the offensive zone, like, logically, you should get better results if you're starting in a more favorable position. So, um, yeah, I think that'll definitely help him. Um, I mean, I think it'll help Laura as well. Like, I mean, if it's Laura and Peak on the third pairing, that'll um, give Laura a great opportunity to develop. Um, I am a little uh, – I'd say one of the things I'm most interested in for training camp is kind of what the pairs are to start. But, um, yeah, it's probably a discussion for later in the pod. Ben? Yeah, yeah, I go back. When was that really big hit he took a couple of years ago? I'm trying to remember. Um, it was, uh, this, a, it was this, a Carolina series. I want to say it was Svechnikov, right? I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like since that time – there's, I don't know if it's been a lack of confidence or maybe overthinking might be the better way to put it. There's so many times when you see him with, you know, a puck on his stick in the D zone, and you can almost see his thoughts going through his head, like, where am I going with this? It's like, you know, let the game come to you naturally. Be, you know, just don't think. Just go play with your instincts. And I think to Eamon's point about just some of the additions on defense, it's going to take some of that pressure off of Lindholm, off of McAvoy to have to be those you know, physical presence out there. Lindholm's not the most physical defenseman anyway. We know that. Um, and shoot the puck more. He has got a rocket of a shot. And, I, I mean, I think you heard, you know, Monty throughout the year, like, you know, talking about that. Like, just, you know, you're on the PP, shoot the puck. You, you've got a cannon. Let it go. But I think it's um, – I don't want to use the word confidence because I think he's a confident player. I mean, I do think he overthinks a little bit. And, uh, again, I think it'll be curious to see how they pair him up. I could see maybe him and Carlo together might be an interesting one to uh, to, to think about. Uh, year one for me, I mean, he was like fifth ranked in Norris voting, I believe. Yeah. Um, and he, he did very well. But that was also on a Jim Montgomery and John Gruden system where before the season started that particular year, both were clamming for more shot generation from the point um, and more points from the point. And last year, it just didn't happen because I, I don't think there was a defensive coach because um, <clears throat> Joe Sacco was a forward guy. And, you know, I don't understand why he was the, the defensive coach in the first place. But anyway, we have Jay Leach in place now. So for me, this is kind of like a make or break year for Hampus Lindholm. It's like, where, where are we if, we, if, he, if he produces another down year um, this upcoming season? Uh, and if he does that, man, it really looks that 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 deal really looks bad. And it's it would be very hard for other teams to be interested in taking him on if if uh, need be traded. Um, but I I do want to give him this year and not like poo poo his whole his whole campaign. I want to see how Jay Leach is going to uh, he's how he's going to respond to, uh, you know, a bigger, a better defense, because. Honestly, I think this defense can be the best in the league, but he's going to be a part of that. He's going to be engaged as well. And and I'm not saying that he's floating out there and he's not trying or anything, but 
if he just gives that extra 10% on top of the 100 he's already given, man, this could be a really good defensive core. Yeah, I mean, if you look at up and down the, the the defensive pairings of what we all projected last week here on the podcast, we all said Zadorov and McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo, Low Rye Peak, and you have Watherspoon who will slide in whenever need be. On paper, to me, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I don't know of a better defensive core in the NHL on paper. I don't. I mean, Colorado's pretty good. Colorado is a close, is, is close. Yeah. It's just Kale McCarr just tops everything over there. <laughs> it's, I, I know. It's Kale McCarr, and then everybody else is down here. But <laughs> when it comes to being even and everybody has, is going to play a role, the Bruins have the best defense in the NHL when it comes to, on paper, the most even and, and most, like, dream scenario defense. You have Zadorov and McAvoy, who are going to be your top pairing, who are going to work well together. Lindholm and Carlo already already have experience, especially on the penalty kill. They'll be good again. And then Lowry and Peak are going to be good for moving the puck well, because Lowry just moves the puck naturally well anyway. Oh, so um, it, Lindholm with Jay Leach back there, you have to hope that most of, that the the difference from last year to this year is more shot generation from across the board defensively. Lindholm had ten goals under John Gruden. Mm-hmm. Last year, he only had three, it, plus that one in game seven, which was legendary. But three goals in the regular season that count towards his stats. The 10 the year previous, there's a difference. Maybe if there's a defensive coach back there with hopefully the mindset of shots of the net, shots of the net, maybe he will have another 10, 11, 12 goal season. Maybe that plus minus will be up again. Maybe that defensive prowess that he had two years ago will be back. Maybe yeah. he'll be back near the top of the Norris Trophy, uh, you know, votes. Maybe I, this is kind of uh, Mark Black and Go Productions colleague uh, Neil Simmons says Lindholm and Carlo is an elite shutdown pairing. They shouldn't be broken up. Got to prove it this year. Yep, this year is their year. They got to prove it. Are are we overhyping Lindholm and Carlo together? I Last mean, year, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not poo-pooing Carlo at all. No, Carlo's. Uh, Carlo's. Uh, uh, I mean, that's that's the guy. But we, you know, obviously, we're touching on um, Lindholm now. This could be interesting if they were to decide to do Zadorov, McAvoy, Lori, Carlo, Lindholm, Peak. This what that would do. It would showcase Lori in a better spot. It would also give Lindholm something to work for. Oh, I'm on the last par- pairing. Mm-hmm. I'm sliding out of the lineup now. I'm sliding down the lineup, and there's Parker Watherspoon pushing from up and uh, pushing from up, uh, pushing from down below me, trying to get into the, into the lineup every night. You have Lindholm and, and Peak there. Lindholm and Peak are going to work hard to try to stay in the lineup every night. Lori, if he has a naturally good start to the season could easily slide past Lindholm if Lori just does that much better. So who knows? Also on the power play, if it's McAvoy, I mean, I'm sorry. If it's um, the power play one, I would have uh, Lori be that quarterback and not McAvoy. Well, we were, talk- we, were talking yeah, about yeah. That- we were talking about that last week. We, so we, were, we were talking about the, the power play and how it could shake up. I said... I personally thought Zadorov power play one, Lorai McAvoy power play two, but they could easily swap Lorai and Zadorov, no problem. If they were to put Lorai power play one and then Zadorov McAvoy power play two, that could easily work. Because I know Montgomery's playbook is one defenseman on the first unit, two on the second. So they can easily do that with Lorai, Zadorov, and McAvoy interchangeably, and I'd have no problem. Amen. Amen, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, um, I think I'd also go Laura in the first unit. Um, I just think he has so much offensive potential. Like we saw it in the Florida series, especially that one goal he scored in game one. Um, I also just think it's good to like, not that the power play is probably the most taxing thing in the world physically, but I think it's also just to, like, let guys like McAvoy have a little less, like um, focus more on even strength. Um, so just a little less like tired throughout the duration of the game. Um, I also think Lynn Holmes could be second power play unit. Um, 
I mean, I don't know if they'll go uh, one defenseman or two defensemen, but personally, I think I'd go. Um, I mean, we have to look at the forwards too, but I think I'd probably put Lynn on the second unit, maybe McAvoy there as well. Um, I saw some people suggest uh, Zadorov because he has such a great slap shot, which I mean, I'd probably have to see more of that before really having a stronger opinion about it. But yeah, those are kind of my thoughts. Yeah. Um, before we get to Ben's thoughts, Lindholm working hard to stay in the lineup. He isn't getting a scratch. We know that, but also you have to, he's good. What I'm trying to say is Watherspoon is there to push everybody to stay in the lineup, to, to stay playing their best. That's what I mean by that. Lindholm isn't going out of the lineup. We know that with that contract, he's not getting out of the lineup unless he's injured. What I'm saying is Watherspoon's there to push people to make them better. So if he slips down to the third defensive pairing, he's got to realize, uh oh, I got to improve. I got to give that extra effort. Maybe he'll push himself back up to the second to pairing or whatever. So that's what I meant by that. Um, ben, what are your thoughts on uh, Hampus Lindholm and the Bruins power play? Yeah, I remember last year where uh, Shattenkirk started giving some power play time. I think he actually, for a time, was on the power play one team and they moved McAvoy down to two. And because we know the power play really oof, struggled <laughs> at times last season, uh, kind of hard to watch. And you did see some improvement. You saw some better puck movement with Shaddy out there. Um, and again, taking a little more off of McAvoy's plate, you know, putting him down at, at the at the number two spot. Uh, I love Mason Lorai. I mean, you talk about a kid that you could see improving from shift to shift and game to game last year. I mean, it was incredible. I am so excited about what we're going to see out of him over the next, not just this year, but over the next couple of years, I would have no problem with him on a power play one, moving McAvoy, maybe in a more permanent spot in, in power play two. And yeah, I think campus, as we talked earlier, really, has a great shot. Um, I think he's going to have to kind of prove that he belongs in that power play position uh, based on kind of what we saw a year ago. Um, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Yeah. Uh, I remember good to your point, Ben, about Shattenkirk. He played a lot. When he even if he wasn't on the power play one, he was on the power play two with Mason Lorai for a little bit of time. Sure. And those two had some really good connections with Morgan Geeky and with let's see here, they had uh to, they had Brazo on there for a little bit. They had people there who aren't known as like your top forwards, but are there as serviceable. Like you had, I want to say they had like Zaka, Geeky, Brazo for a bit with Shattenkirk and Lorai for a few games, and that worked on paper. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back next week for episode 363 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, where host Sam Smith and Mark Allred will preview the 2024-2025 season. See you then.